Hey there folks, welcome to the Carver College of Medicine. My name is Katie Iverson and I'm one of the faculty here at the PA department and I'm also one of the co-directors of the Bulwer Learning Community. We so wish we could have you here on campus to show you our awesome facilities, but because of these times, you can't be here. So my friend Elvis and I are gonna show you around. Hi, I'm Elvis Castro, I'm an M2 here at the Carver College of Medicine and I'll just be speaking a little bit about the OSAC Counseling Center here. It's a great resource for anybody uh, that's feeling a little stressed or just needs someone to talk to. They also have a lot of free material for any extra reading for classes that you might have and they always want you in there because they always got nice snacks and cookies waiting for you. And right next to the OSAC Counseling Center is actually the OSAC office. That is where lots of people that you'll interact with live. So the deans have their offices there, as well as the financial aid folks are there, the people. That do all the clinical scheduling for your M2, 3, and 4 year live in the OSAC office. And the registers there as well. So if you ever have issues with your schedule, or with your financial aid, or with your registration, um, with any kind of holds or anything on it, all that information can be found out and get help in the OSAC office. And then right across from the OSAC office is the PA department. So here at the College of Medicine, PAs and MDs take their classes together. So you'll be all mixed together. So we share the facilities and the PA departments right across the hall from OSAC. These are the learning communities here at the Carver College of Medicine. We have Bean, Bulware, Phlox, and McAllen all the way down there. You can kind of think of these as the home base here at the Carver College of Medicine. Each of you will be assigned to one of these. You'll have your mailbox in your community, hangers to store your things. Each of these has a nice relaxation study portion to it. There's two floors as well. There's a lot of study areas on the top floor. I mean, each of them has a kitchen with a microwave and refrigerator, so during the lunch hour, you can come here, heat up your lunch, and socialize with a couple of your peers as well. We like to think of the learning community as kind of like the houses, houses of Hogwarts, except for there's no sorting hat and then there's no villains that you have to beat at the end of the year. And there's also no Quidditch, which is kind of sad. I wish we had some Quidditch. The other thing the learning communities do do, though, is that they all partner with a local philanthropic organization to raise money by putting on events. So Bean works with the Shelter House, which is Iowa City's homeless shelter. Bulwer works with United Action for Youth, which is an after-school program for at-risk youth in Iowa City. Flox works with the UI Mobile Clinic, which is a student-led clinic, as well as the Free Medical Clinic and Free Mental Health Clinic in Iowa City. They put on a really big 5K called Doc Dash every year to raise money. And then McCowan at the end, they work with our DVIP, which is our Domestic Violence Intervention Program, which is the program in Iowa City helping people get out of domestic violence, have safe housing. And so every year, each community puts on events that raise money for their local charities. And so it's a great time for us to not only get involved in the community, but to do stuff fun together as College of Medicine community members, those are always kind of the fun things that happen every year and they go for a good cause. So this is the atrium here at Murph, and it's a place where we have tables for lunches and for study. It's also a place where we do some special events. So McCowan has a really fun event in the fall called Carver's Got Talent. We do a talent show over the lunch hour. Anyone can sign up and show us their interesting talents of dancing or singing or playing music, which is one of the highlights of the year for sure. And Bullworth runs trivia nights here a couple times a year as well. So the atrium is space that we use a lot, and it's a space that we can kind of fit the entire student body, which is awesome. And through these doors is the a high auditorium. This is where a lot of our large lectures are held, so both MD and PA classes will be in there at the same time, just going through over the large lectures for all your core classes that you'll be taking here. Behind me are the clinical suites. During your second week here at Carver, you'll actually start doing some physical exam skills with simulated patients. Simulated patients are very good teachers and they give very good feedback. You'll also be doing a couple of simulated patient interactions. So you'll actually be taking history and it'll be recorded within each room so that professors can give you feedback on it later. You spend lots of times in the clinical suites, not just in your first year, but in your second year and then into the clinical years. We here at Carver, we want to put you through all the paces of all the different kind of patient encounters you might have with toddlers, with elderly folks, with people that have disabilities, because we know that becoming a healthcare provider is a grand calling, and we want to make sure that the mistakes that you might make or the things you can learn from messing up in a patient interview or messing up in a patient physical exam happens in a safe space here in our clinical suite with our simulated patients so you don't make that mistake out in the real world. So we put you through tons of paces up here, tons of exams and kind of recording recordings up here, but with the whole goal in mind to make you a great healthcare provider so when you do have a real patient interaction, you've learned from maybe making a mistake here that you won't make again. 
Here at Carver, we also have a student government comprised of M1s through M4s, and we really advocate for every student to get involved in leadership, either through their learning community or through the student government as a whole. You can get a lot of things done through it, and there's a lot of advocacy going on through that. So actually, right behind us is our meditation room, which is what one of the things that our students advocated for through the Student Advocacy Committee, which works with the administration. So they advocated for the meditation room, which got built. We, they also, in the recent years, have advocated for some workout equipment that got put in the locker rooms in the College of Medicine building. They also advocated for something as silly as we need more plugs to plug in our devices in the study room. So everyone got power strips, like got Velcro to the bottom of tables. So from little things like that to big things like the meditation room, our advocacy committee and our student government really speak up for our students, gather student thoughts and what their needs and desires are, and then take that to the administration. And we have a really great relationship between our student government and our administration to kind of get things done to make this a great place for everyone to learn and to grow. So it's no secret that Iowa has all four seasons. So today it's raining, so we're in the middle of the medical campus. I'm gonna point some things out, but with the invent of modern technology, most likely you're gonna see sunny shots and drone footage, even while I'm talking on a rainy day. But in the middle of campus, here we are. So Murph, the building we came out of is over here. And then right next behind me is the medical education building, which is actually the original psych hospital here at the University of Iowa. And the main thing that we have in there is all of our wet lab space, where you'll have micro lab and other kind of procedural skill labs that will happen in the medical education building. On the other side of that is the Hardin Library. So the Hardin Health Science Library is a giant big library, not unlike actually any other library, but we have amazing online and in-person help if you need access to journals and books and all that kind of jazz while you're studying. It also has some really nice 24-hour study rooms. And right where I'm standing here and underneath is also the College of Medicine admin building. So that's where the main big dean of the whole College of Medicine lives in case you ever need to find that office. But the main point of being outside and telling you this is you don't ever have to go outside here at Carver. All the buildings are connected by either skywalks or tunnels. So you never have to brave the elements on a super hot, humid summer day or on a rainy fall day or on a winter cold day. You can get inside from the tip of Murph all the way to the very end of the hospital all by staying inside, either on the second floor skywalks or in the tunnels. Behind me is the CECOM Student Lounge. Again, this is another one of the many things that the Student Advocacy Group has provided us with. So in this room, you'll find a lot of cubby space, couches, a lot of study rooms as well. Here at Iowa, you'll notice a lot of things are named after Carver, and that's due to the fact that Mr. Carver and his wife gave a huge contribution to the school. He was a philanthropist along with his wife who looked to impact Iowa's healthcare system, and so we're forever grateful for his contribution to the school. Now we're on the 12th floor of the New Children's Hospital, and we wish we were here because this view is awesome. So the University of Iowa campus is divided by the Iowa River in the middle, and so we're on the west side of campus, which is where the hospital is, the medical school. It's also where the other professional campuses are. So the law school is over here, and public health is here, and nursing, and dentistry, and physical therapy, as well as mainly all the athletics for the university are here. So the football stadium is right outside this window. I wish you could see it. The basketball arena is on this side of campus as well as baseball, soccer, field hockey, and all those other sports. And the east side of campus is where our downtown is, where the restaurants are, and the places where we have some outside festivals in the summer. And a lot of the undergrad or more like liberal arts type classes happen on the east side of campus. But Elvis is going to tell you about one of the coolest things that happens here at Iowa called the WAVE. So the WAVE is a long-standing tradition here at the Children's Hospital. What we have is the patients here at the Children's Hospital after the end of the first quarter at all the home football games. They wave out this view here and all the home fans wave back. It's a really heartwarming thing that we have here and we are going to continue it as we go throughout the years. In terms of the living situation here, it's very affordable and if you don't like worrying about parking, there is a CAN bus system to take you all around the campus. So that kind of concludes our tour. We really wish you could have been here in person. We can't wait to meet you. We can't wait to welcome you back to our campus when it's safe and healthy. And we hope you choose Iowa as a place to get your healthcare education because we love it here. We're so proud to be Hawkeyes and we hope you get to be Hawkeye too.